recording. Doug. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Uh, so yes, today we're going to talk about uh, crossing guard safety. And when we talk about crossing guard safety, often we, we really think about keeping the children on their way to school safe. But we also want to make sure that we add to this goal that of keeping not just the kids safe, but keeping our crossing guards safe as well. And so we're going to talk today just a review of, you know, standard crossing guard uh, safety. And we're going to go a little bit into what have we seen in our history, you know, of claims with injured crossing guards, what kind of things, you know, happen that get our crossing guards hurt and how can we prevent those. Uh, so let's start just talking about the basic gear. You know, what do you need to have when you are reporting for your shift as a crossing guard? Well, you need to have your stop paddle. You need to have a, a couple of traffic cones. Uh, you need to have a retro reflective high visibility clothing, uh, whether that's a vest that you wear over uh, your outerwear or whether you have specialized outerwear that ha has that retro reflectivity in it. We need to make sure we have that high visibility clothing and something that maybe we don't touch on quite enough when it comes to crossing guard safety is making sure you have the right footwear for the job and for the conditions. So, you know, stop paddle, you know, high visibility, two cones and the right footwear. The biggest hazard we're dealing with when uh, we go to work as a, as a crossing guard is obviously the traffic. You know, that's the most likely issue we're going to run into where there may be a severe injury or a fatality. Uh, as a crossing guard, you want to make sure that you understand what your role is. Uh, when you raise that paddle for traffic to stop, you're helping to ensure that that traffic stays stopped. But your primary job is to direct the traffic, the pedestrian traffic across the road. You are not directing traffic. And so with that in mind, it's important to remember that you should avoid any misleading motions that could send a signal to drivers that maybe you're giving them the okay to go when you're not intending to communicate to them. That could be in the form of a head nod, you know, while looking at a driver uh, or a hand signal directed towards a driver or even shifting your paddle from one hand to another may look like you're lowering uh, or changing, you know, your, what you're doing with your stop paddle. And so those are all kind of examples of misleading movements. Uh, we want to make sure we avoid when we're in the crosswalk with that stop paddle. Uh, we do signal to the foot traffic when it's okay to enter the crosswalk. And so that's the traffic we're actually directing is that crosswalk traffic. When you're on duty, it's very important to make sure that you're always, you're never distracted. We need to be paying attention to what the, the children are doing, the pedestrians, and we really need to have an eye all the time on the traffic. So we need to avoid anything that's distracting us from that job. Uh, especially to cell phones, we want to make sure that we're not talking on the phone or sending text messages or reading online. The only time you should be using your cell phone, you're on duty as a crossing guard, is if there's an emergency and you need to contact your supervisor or 911 or, or some other emergency contact. Another condition that can create a lot of problems for us as crossing guards is the weather. And so we need to recognize that weather can change traffic's ability to bond and stop uh, in a couple of different ways. You may have wet or icy or snow where the stopping distance for the vehicles may be increased. They may need more warning to be able to come to a stop. Also, these conditions uh, can lead to poor visibility where you may uh, be uh, not able to see the traffic as well, or vice versa. The drivers may not be able, be able to see you as well. And another thing to keep in mind when it comes to your gear, especially if it's cold and bad weather, is to make sure that you're not using any gear like an umbrella or a hoodie that fits really close around your face that's going to block your vision of the traffic situation. You know, you want to make sure your peripheral vision is clear uh, and that there's nothing between you and the traffic that you're keeping an eye on as far as your ability to see them. Another very important rule that we need to keep in mind is that crossing guards should never touch children. Uh, no physical contact except to remove the child from harm's way. You know, if a child were to fall down in the middle of the street and couldn't get up, then you may need to help remove that child from harm's way. 
other than that, you need to avoid all physical contact with children. When you arrive at your uh, assigned location uh, to work uh, each morning or afternoon, we need to set up that site first. And the first thing you're going to want to do is after you've got your gear and everything gathered, you want to go down and turn on the signal lights, the school zone flashing lights. And so this is done once you flip that switch into the on position, you should have the ability to lock the box or the switch so that, you know, some mischievous kids can't come along and turn them off on you in the middle of your shift uh, and you not be aware of it. So make sure that, that, that those lights are switched on, that the lock is in place, and then double check and make sure that the lights are actually flashing and that they're working. Then you can go back to your crosswalk and place your cones. And we're going to place those cones on either side of the crosswalk at the middle of the, of the road. And uh, we want to make sure that we do this while keeping ourselves safety safe. So of course you want to make sure and raise that paddle high uh, facing the, uh, the traffic uh, as you go out to place those cones. Uh, at the end of your shift is kind of the reverse. You know, you want to make sure you go out and pick up those cones uh, first, make sure your paddle is up so that traffic can see it. Uh, and once you've collected those cones and you've exited the crosswalk, then go down and turn off your flashing lights and lock them in the off position uh, is the last thing that you do. When you're actually crossing your foot traffic, your pedestrian traffic, we need to make sure that we do this in a safe manner as well. Before you enter the crosswalk, make sure that you look left and look right you know, for oncoming traffic. And then before you proceed, if it looks good, make sure you look back to the left again. That's gonna be the nearest traffic to you as you enter that uh, crosswalk. So make sure you check that left side again, right before you step out. Verify that all traffic, all cars are stopped, you know, before you get out there in the middle of the road and definitely before you direct your pedestrians, your children to come into the crosswalk. While you're out there, make sure you keep that paddle high. You're going to raise that paddle as soon as you step into the crosswalk, and it needs to be facing the traffic, you know, for the lane uh, direction of travel for that you are in. And make sure that throughout the event, as you're crossing uh, children in the crosswalk, that you're keeping an eye also on traffic, not just to the vehicles that are stopped at the limit line, but you know, keep pay attention to what's happening with the traffic behind those vehicles. Uh, we had an accident a few years ago where a vehicle rear-ended a car that was stopped at the crosswalk and pushed the stopped car into the crossing guard. And so part of your situational awareness is not just the nearest vehicle, but also what's happening to the vehicles, you know, farther back. Are they stopping? You know, and that could alert you if you notice a vehicle not stopping that looks like it might rear-end someone that can alert you to help get yourself and you know, any kids out of the way of that possible accident that's happening. So never assume that when you put your stop paddle up, the cars are just going to stop. You still need to make sure you wait and watch and make sure those vehicles are stopped uh, before you proceed. Don't wait for children to be ready to cross, you know, if you've already crossed a group. If they're not at the curb ready to go or, or in the crosswalk as you're finishing a prior group, then you need to have that next group wait and, and gather there at the crosswalk, a foot back from the curb uh, before uh, you next bring that next group into the crosswalk. Stay alert all the time. You know, we need to make sure you're aware of everything that's going on around you with the pedestrians as well as with the cars. Your greatest risk is from turning vehicles. Cars that are making a left or right hand turn are most likely to maybe not see you or not be clear on, you know, what rules apply when it comes to uh, crossing that crosswalk in, in when making a left or right turn. So be real cautious with cars in that right lane that may be thinking about making a right-hand turn or even cars making a left-hand turn across your crosswalk. Keep an eye out for that. If you are crossing using a crosswalk where there is a traffic signal, uh, you want to make sure that you use that signal to help you in this process. So the first thing that you're going to be doing is assembling your uh, kids that are getting ready to cross at the curb, you know, they should be gathering a foot back from the curb 
and we want to make sure that everybody is walking across the crosswalk. If they've come on a bike or a skateboard, you know, we want to let them know that they need to dismount and walk that across the street. Uh, you'll then press the call button for the signal to change. And you'll be waiting for the signal to change. The light will turn red to stop traffic and you'll get your green walk light. And then you can raise your paddle and step into the crosswalk. Uh, again, verifying that traffic is stopped first, and then you can motion for your pedestrians to enter the crosswalk. This whole time, you're going to keep that paddle high facing traffic so everybody can see it. Uh, you want to make sure that you're facing the traffic, that your paddle is facing the oncoming traffic so that it's visible. Uh, you want to make sure that when you're ready, you're going to signal to the kids to come into the crosswalk and you want to make sure that that signal is clearly directed at the pedestrians, not in a way that it may be misconstrued by a driver as a motion for them to proceed. Uh, you need to, you know, watch and as that last child steps onto the curb on the other side, then you can leave the roadway and keep your paddle up until you've actually stepped onto the curb out of the roadway. If that signal changes to don't walk while you're crossing a group, finish crossing those that are already in the crosswalk, but we wanna, you know, anybody who hasn't entered the crosswalk before that time, you wanna to signal to them to wait uh, for the next crossing. If you're crossing in a crosswalk without signals, the procedure is pretty much the same, except instead of pushing, pushing the call button, you're going to be look, watching for a sufficient break in traffic. So watch traffic, look for a nice break in traffic, raise your paddle, and then wait to verify that traffic is stopping and that it is stopped before you bring uh, your group into the crosswalk. Some unexpected situations may require that we respond a little bit differently. You should have a, an emergency contact list with you. Uh, you know, examples of numbers you may need may be for your police department, maybe the public works department, uh, or maybe even for the office at the school that you're working at, um, or you 911 is obviously an important contact to have. And so make sure you have those emergency contacts for your supervisor also. If the lights, when you turn them on in the morning, aren't working, make sure you call the supervisor and be there early enough to, you know, make sure that we have a chance to address that problem if our lights aren't working. Uh, if you have a problem with a careless driver, someone speeding through the intersection, or, you know, they're making a turn when they shouldn't be, or they're cutting, cutting the corner and coming too close to you or traffic, you know, it's really tempting to, to holler at that driver and maybe even bang on their car and try and give them a piece of your mind. You really need to avoid doing that. Try and stay as far away from that hazard as possible. Keep the children and your pedestrians as far away as possible. And you can report that negligent driver to the police department. Here's an example. I went out and took some video. And while I was videoing in this school zone, with uh, the, the yellow lights flashing in a 20 mile per hour zone, we had this, uh, you know, this Ford SUV come flying through at, you know, probably 45 miles an hour or better. And, you know, that's an example. That's going to make you a little upset when you're the crossing guard and when you see that. You know, try and stay awake, stay safe, keep an eye out for that. And if you can, get the plate number, make, model, color of the vehicle, description of the driver, you know, what kind of violation you think they were committing, what time did it happen, and make sure you make an, a note of any other people who also witnessed the event. And then just pass that information on to your police department. Let's just take the last couple of minutes here to talk about crossing guard injuries. Over the last several years, as I went back and looked through our, our claims history, found about 38 uh, work comp claims involving injuries to crossing guards. 26 of those were for slip, trip, or falls. And so that's, you know, the, the biggest way you're probably going to get injured if you get hurt on the job as a crossing guard. Number two is being hit by a car. Uh, and that's, you know, shockingly, you know, high, I think, and, and really distressing. And so we need to be really careful with that awareness of what's going on with the traffic. Uh, strains from lifting happen, you know, getting your gear out of the car or collecting your cones from the street. Uh, and they're all, obviously, there's always other miscellaneous. But the big one we're looking at is these slip and falls. And out of the slip and falls, out of there was... Uh, oh, sorry, out of the 26 slip and falls, half of those were in conditions where it was snow and ice and the crossing guards slipped. 
in those slippery conditions. And so that's probably the number one thing you can do to try and keep yourself from being injured as a crossing guard is making sure you have the right footwear, uh, especially if it's inclement weather. Uh, you have you can have you know boots that have special traction on them for snow and ice. I really recommend that. It's not enough just to have a big heavy waffle stomper sole on the bottom of your boot. You need something that will actually dig into and grab in the ice. And in the picture here, there's an example of these little over uh, traction devices that you can just pull on over your existing shoe, and they'll have little steel or or other metal tips that'll dig into the ice, or sometimes they may have a, a, an aluminum oxide strip um, or some other type of traction on there, uh, some kind of chain or, or different things like that, spikes. But I really recommend that you look at having that on those snowy, icy days for sure. A lot of crossing guards also fall as they step off the curb or back onto the curb and they will roll an ankle and fall down. And so it's really important to make sure that you've got good supportive footwear there as well. And be aware of other surfaces where it may be uneven or where there may be loose gravel or something that could cause it to be slippery as well. Wearing a boot, I think is a really good idea because we do see a lot of these, you know, uh, stepping off the curb and, and falling. So something that gives your ankle some support, some support can be really helpful helpful and making sure you have the appropriate traction for the condition on the bottom of those shoes. Another thing to think of is snow and ice removal. You know, having a shovel and some snow melt so that you can clear, you know, that opening to your crosswalk and the approach to your crosswalk and be able to put down some ice melt is a really good idea to help address those slippery conditions there. And if it's really bad, you know, you may give that public works number a call and have the snow plow come by and maybe spread a little extra, you know, salt on the intersection for you to help keep that uh, crosswalk free of ice as you are uh, doing your shift and, and, and crossing those pedestrians across the road. When we see incidents where crossing guards get hit by traffic, the visibility is obviously a big issue. So if you ever have any weather conditions like heavy fog happens occasionally, or it could be heavy rain or heavy snow that reduces visibility, you need to take extra precautions or maybe even suspend crossing if the conditions are extreme. You know, you need to ask yourself, can you see the traffic, you know, when it's far enough away and can they see you? And there's things you can do to augment your visibility. Sometimes uh, we've seen these stop paddles that have these bright flashing LED lights on them, and that may help in low visibility situations. We also had uh, some people suggest that they have little LED lights that they that strobe the lights that sit on the top of their cones in the in the middle of the crosswalk there in the street that can help. Uh, increase that visibility for drivers if there's something up ahead. And so those are some ideas. You know when you're um, Picking up the cones is also a time when that can happen if you, you know, forget to keep your paddle up or people, you know, aren't seeing you because you're not taking the same precautions as you do when you're crossing the kids. That's another, you know, high risk moment there. So keep an eye on traffic, increase your visibility, you know, and keep that paddle up there anytime you're in the crosswalk, whether you're putting the cones out or picking the cones up or crossing people. And remember that example I gave you of the rear end collision that pushed the stop car into the crossing guard. You need to be aware of the big picture, not just the immediately close picture. And when you're picking things up, like picking your cones up and stuff, just remember proper lifting techniques. If you can devise a handle for your cones with a rope or some other kind of handle that'll make it easier to pick them up and carry, that's a good idea. But uh, general rules for lifting is to keep the object close to your body, to maintain good posture. You want to keep your back up straight, your shoulders back. And when you bend down, you know, bend with your knees and try and keep your back straight and as close to vertical as possible. When you have to turn, turn with your feet. Don't twist at the waist, you know. And when you're setting something down, the same rules apply, you know. Don't twist at your waist and make sure and keep that load close to your body and try and maintain good posture while you are lifting that object or setting it back down. So in summary, we are really focused on keeping the children safe and the crossing guard safe as well. Uh, that's very important. You need to have the right equipment for the job. Make sure that you have your high visibility uh, clothing. Make sure you've got that stop paddle to your cones and make sure you've got the right footwear uh, for the job. 
You want to make sure that you are very clear about the signals that you give and don't give any misleading signals to drivers that they may interpret as being, you know, the okay for them to proceed when you're, that's not what you're saying. Make sure you're not distracted. Make sure you can be focused on the pedestrians and the traffic throughout your shift and make sure that you avoid confrontations with drivers. You know, if somebody's done something, you know, wrong or negligent, just make a note and uh, of the information and pass that on to your police department. Be aware of the traffic conditions, the big picture of the traffic conditions to help keep you and the kids safe and take steps to improve your traction on your shoes, uh, have good support in your shoes and you know take those precautions that you need to for those slippery conditions or as you're walking over those uneven surfaces. And that is the presentation today. Do we have anybody who has any comments? Uh, if you've got maybe help or, or questions, yeah, folks. If you've got questions or comments, type those into the chat box, and we'll take those take those now. We did have one question come in, and that was regarding if we are going to be posting this session or putting it or, or getting a copy out. And the answer to that is yes. We'll be posting uh, the recording of this session up to our YouTube channel here in just a few minutes. As soon as it renders, we'll we'll post it up. And so you can share that with your with your crossing guards if they don't happen to be on this session and uh, or potentially watch it as a group. Uh, looking there to see if we've got any more questions. I do not see any. Final word, Doug. I appreciate everything you all do. Go out there and have a safe day. Thank you.